Go to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Last Wednesday, I only preached like 26 minutes. I had in my mind last week that we were going to do a business meeting, but it didn't work out. And uh, I guess my mind was just thinking, preach quickly. So, I know I can do it. All right, you ready? Let's all stand one more time. Let me read this to you. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. And we'll read to verse 34. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not life more than meat, and the body more than, uh, body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they, do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, Shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewith shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these, all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the t for t the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Lord, thank you for your word. I pray you bless it in Jesus' name. All right, you can be seated. I titled this because my main thought was thinking about that phrase, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. And I thought, what does that really mean? I've read that before. I've probably had a thought on what that meant before, maybe even preached on it, but at the time I couldn't think about what that meant, so I had to revisit it and think of it a little bit. And then I studied the context and looked at what Jesus is saying exactly and didn't put this together originally, but quite honestly, it's a perfect time to preach this message right after a business meeting because you could think about, and I don't think I said anything that was negative or that would cause worry for our future as a church, but you can start looking around or start thinking about things and wonder, like, what's going to happen? What's the future of our church? You know, what are we going to do if this happens or that happens? And maybe we're worried about in our own life, you know, maybe our marriage. You know, how is that going to work out? What's our future like? Or our kids, you know, are they going to grow up to be this way or that way? <laughs> are they going to get in trouble? Are they going to, you know... We have so much that we worry about, but the Bible says sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. And basically, I'll just give you a head start in what this means. Basically, what it's saying is don't worry about tomorrow. You've got enough to worry about today. You know, and I think that this was probably a phrase that was said a lot during Jesus' time. I don't think he was necessarily coining this phrase, but he's saying sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Sufficient unto the day, the day, the day that you're in, is evil thereof. He's like, hey, you have enough to worry about right now. Don't borrow worry by looking into what's going to happen tomorrow or what's going to happen a few months from now or a few years from now. Don't worry about that. Don't lose sleep over it. Don't, don't worry uh, too much, okay? So here are some things that we worry about. We worry that we or somebody that we love is going to die. How many of you lose sleep over that? I know, being a father whose kids drive and now a son going back and forth to Oklahoma City, I'm just like, I just can't handle the stress, the pressure, <laughs> thinking about how come he didn't call? He should be there by now. All those things that I was always like, why are my mom and dad so worried? It's, it's, it's silly. But it's true. As parents, we worry about what's going to happen. And you know, we worry about our, our family. We worry about our, uh, you know, we got a new baby now. We worry every time she doesn't breathe right or every time she's got something wrong. Uh, she burned her finger the other day. 
You know, we start worrying about that. It's like, hey, burns are going to happen. You know, it wasn't on fireworks. No, don't worry. We're, we didn't give her any fireworks. <laughs> it was during fireworks, but <laughs> didn't have anything to do with the fireworks. And, uh, and that's how we are. We just worry. And we, you'll, you'll sit there and you'll worry about that and you'll start thinking, I need to do this. And, and what, about, what about this? How is this going to happen? Okay, we worry about if our loved ones, uh, you know, what, about their health and, and what they're going to. Here's the big thing in our society today, the big C word, cancer, right? Every time somebody goes to the doctor, it seems like, hey, I might have cancer. Pray for me. And they start worrying. Next thing you know, people are crying. They're wearing pink ribbons. They're doing everything because they're, my loved one's going to die. They have cancer. And sometimes if you don't show enough worry and sympathy, they think that you don't care enough about them. But the truth is, why worry about that if we don't even know yet? You're waiting for test results to come in, or you're waiting to see what's going to happen. You know, it's probably going to be okay. We don't know. Why worry about it, right? Now, obviously, you care, and so it's natural that you would have some concern. But don't spend your whole life worrying about things that haven't even happened yet. You don't even know if they're going to happen. And we worry about... Uh, our things, you know, our things going to get stolen. Did I did I lock that door? Now if somebody keeps stealing. I don't know if I told you this or not. But someone keeps stealing the little ball off my trailer hitches. Uh, I've lost two of them now. The first time I thought, well, maybe it just wasn't tight and it vibrated off or something. But this last time I tightened it really, really good. I'm going to have to weld the thing on or something because people. I think whenever I'm parked at the trail and I'm going running, that's the only time I can think. That always seems to be whenever I notice it is after I went running. So somebody comes out there and says, oh, I need one of those, and just unscrews it off. Just silly, isn't it? But when you have things stolen from, don't you feel so, like, you know, abused, like taken advantage of? And it makes you want to go out and get all the security systems and lock all your doors and, and, uh, and you know, have surveillance cameras and, and have all that kind of stuff because you're like, what are they going to steal from me? And you can worry about that. You could lose sleep thinking, did I lock the door, you know, did I, you know. Uh, was that alarm that I heard? Was that my car alarm? You know, it just you could you could really start stressing out about that. Uh, we start worrying about it, whether or not somebody's mad at us. Now, you know, sometimes after I preach a message or say something, at, you know, all the conversations that I have on a Sunday, I spend most of the week, most of the week, pretty much alone with my own thoughts, and so Sunday is just sensory overload, just meeting people, talking to people, and, and working things out. Then I spend the rest of the week wondering, like, did I make somebody mad whenever I said this or that? Or, you know, I just, that's just natural for me to start worrying about that. And it's like, why stress about something that you can't really do anything about? Or that's probably not even true, right? It's probably not even something to worry about, but we can, we can worry about that if we're not careful. Our income, you know, what, how am I going to pay the bills? What if this recession does come, you know, what if, what about this cost of food? Everything's ridiculous. What about the cost of gas? It's, it's, it's so bad. And, you know, and then preacher keeps preaching on revelation and all the drought and famine and pestilence that's going to come, and, and, and I could, everybody could just get worried thinking about that. Well, Jesus says, don't worry about that. Take no thought for tomorrow. Tomorrow will take thought for itself. And he says, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Look. Think about today. You got enough to worry about today rather than borrowing trouble and worry from tomorrow. That's the basic idea. <laughs> Notice in verse 27, he says, Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? Uh, you know, a while back we had a missionary come. He was they were getting ready, he and his family were getting ready to go to uh, Brazil, Brother Mike Schmidt, friend of ours. And uh, he came here and he preached. I don't know if you remember the Smiths. I think everybody probably does. And, uh, and he actually preached from this text, and he said something that I guess I had just never thought of before. But he said, I don't believe that that word stature is talking about how tall somebody is. And I was like, I don't know. I think that's what it means. And then he said, here's one of the reasons he thinks that is because it would seem kind of weird to say who can add one cubit to his stature. It seems like what he would be saying in the context there is like who could add even one cubit, like it's not very much. But a cubit is the size from here to here. Well, that's a, that's a, when it comes to height, that's a, that's a big thing. And so I was like, you know, I think he's got something there. 
And so I started looking that up. And stature can mean a lot of things. And back in the 14, 15, 1600s, it did. And, and even today, if you look up the definition, the second definition is quality or status gained by growth, development, or achievement. Okay, so what he's saying is who can add one cubit, like this much, to his success, to his wealth, to his achievements? You know, who can make himself a better person by just sitting around thinking about it? And isn't that true? Like sometimes we sit around and we just think and think and think and think, and really we're not getting much accomplished by thinking. Now, there's, now planning is good, and sometimes you need to think about what's going to happen. You need to count the cost. The Bible tells us that. You know, figure out before you do a job, you know, you figure out, make sure you got everything you need for the job. Those, those types of things are good. But what he said is don't worry about things like what am I going to eat? Now, I don't believe he means, you know, don't worry about food. Don't make sure that you have enough food. You remember back when the children of, of uh, Israel were going through the wilderness and he gave them manna? And he said every day they had to pick up manna, but take enough just for that day. And if they took too much, then it would rot and it wouldn't be any good the next day. So they had to live day by day. But then on, the, on a Friday night, he said take two portions. That way you don't have to go out and do it on Saturday, but you'll have a portion already on Saturday, and he worked it out that way. Well, all that takes, obviously, thinking about what you're going to eat, but the, the point is, hey, don't worry about laying up stores for, you know, the future and what's going to happen if this, you know, he's saying, do what you have to today, and I'm going to get into this here in a second, but do what you have to today, and don't stress about what you can't take care of. Don't sit there and worry about your wardrobe. Don't worry about your how much food you have stocked up in your cabinets and your cupboards. Uh, don't worry about, you know, if you're going to have enough water to drink. Like, make sure you're drinking water. Plan that out. <laughs> but, you know, some people have to have like a whole uh, pantry just full of these big old water things just in case, you know, something happens in the, you know. He's saying don't, don't worry about that. You have enough to worry about today. Don't stress about things that, that, that are going to happen. And I'm going to tell you this, that I'm going to look at just a couple points here. And I believe that if we will live a life as much as possible worry-free, not stressing out about things that are out of our control, things that we can't help, if we just give it to God and worry about serving God, worry about being right with God, and taking care of now and taking care of my, you know, man, we're going to live such a peaceful life. <laughs> So much less stress if we can do that. So much less pain and, and suffering if we can just live that way. And I'm not talking about just being this care, just to, I mean, carefree, yes, but not to the point of like, you know, you don't ever prepare, you don't ever work, you don't ever do. Obviously, that's wrong. But the type of person that just doesn't stress about things, you know, but gives it to God and says, look, I've done what I can do. I'm going to sleep well. And tomorrow I'll get up and do it all over again, you know, and, and replan for the next day, whatever. All right, so let's talk about two points, just simply today and then tomorrow, meaning the rest of time, you know, from here on until we die. Number one, today. Take care of what you can take care of today, right? It's, it's, good, it's good to do things today, by the way, that will prepare us for tomorrow, help us have a better tomorrow. You know, it's really good. Uh, think about this. I mean, if you go to bed and you've got a whole bunch of dishes and the living room is messed up because your baby girl went and threw everything on the floor <laughs> and, you know, you, and this is dirty and that's dirty and this is undone and that's undone. And if you go to bed knowing that you're going to wake up in the morning and all that's going to be there, you know, you're more likely to stress out about it, number one. Number two, when tomorrow comes, man, now you've already started your day out kind of bad. So while it's today, do some things that are going to help you prepare for tomorrow. This is good, all right? It's not saying don't worry about tomorrow. And here's the thing. If, if, if you run out of time and you say, that's it, I've got to leave those dishes, I've got to leave that laundry, I've got to leave whatever and get some sleep, it's going to be okay. You can do that. Don't worry about it. And that's the kind of uh, thing that we're talking about. But at the same time, it is good to prepare for tomorrow. You know that the Bible says that the day start, it, the, in the, 
that cult, Jewish culture, the day started at night. You ever notice that? In Genesis, the evening and the morning were the first day. Right? The evening and the morning were the second day. And all throughout the Bible is consistent about that. So the, the day began at night. That sounds weird, <laughs> weird. But this whole, the, a whole day, 24-hour period, started at night. So basically, you had uh, up until you go to bed, and then you go to bed, and then you wake up, and up until that night where you have to get ready for bed again. Okay, so that's your day. And if you think about that, it makes sense. If we would, in our minds, say, my day starts, you know, right before I go to bed, and I'm making, every, making sure everything's done, everything's prepared for tomorrow, I got my little list out, I know what I'm supposed to do, maybe my clothes are laid out for me, and everything's ready to go. Look, I'm not saying I always do that, hardly ever do those things, but I do some of that. <laughs> and it's all ready to go, right? I got my steel-cut oats soaking in the water. I never do that. I really need to. So that in the morning, they're ready. I just got to throw them in the microwave and be, <laughs> be done. You can do those kinds of things, preparing for tomorrow, and then you just go to bed not worrying about tomorrow. See what I'm saying? So it's not completely, you know, not thinking about tomorrow, but it's just like not worrying about tomorrow. Go ahead today, get done what you can, uh, even as it goes, as, even as it has to do with taking care of tomorrow. Okay, look at Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10, verse 5. Jesus sends out the 12, basically to do what we would call soul winning or door knocking. And then later on, he's going to send out 70. And it says, these 12, these 12, Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out the devils, freely ye have received, freely give. Look, we're not going to go out and heal sick and, and, and cleanse the lepers. Don't read into that. Okay, this is what he told them to do. And he told them this, Provide not gold nor silver nor brass in your purse, nor script for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staves, for the workman is worthy of his meat. And into whatsoever city or town ye shall enter, inquire who is worthy uh, and there abide till ye go thence. And when ye come into a house, salute it. And if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whosoever shall not receive you nor hear your words, when ye depart out of the house or a city, shake off the dust of your feet. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in that day of judgment than for your city. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues, and ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. Now, before I read the next part, think about that for a minute. Jesus already told them, as you go into the city, you're going to be delivered up to the courts. You're going to be persecuted. You're going to be... And so you would think that their idea would be, Here's how I'm going to deal with that. I'm going to go ahead and be ready. I'm going to prepare a speech so I know what to say. I'm going to go ahead and take, uh, take what I need you know, to defend myself or take what I need to, uh, uh, to supply for my needs while I'm in jail or, or whatever. But Jesus says this in verse 18. He says, uh, I mean, in verse 19, But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given you in the same hour, what ye shall speak, for it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of the Father which speaketh in you. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father to the child, uh, the child and the children shall rise up against the, uh, their parents, and cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth unto the end shall be saved. Now, let me, you know, I'm not trying to dig way into that, that passage too much, but basically here's what he's saying. Jesus said, okay, you're going to go out into this land. You're going to do all these things. And here's the plan. Here was their plan, okay? You're not going to have a plan. <laughs> that was his plan. You're going to go. You're not going to take extra clothes. You're not going to have a speech and know what you're going to say. Now, look, he didn't say that we have to go do that every time we go out door knock and don't have a plan. He didn't say that. He, but for these 12, he said, here's the plan. I don't want you to take this. I don't want you to take that. 
You just go and you're going to live day by day. You know, you're just, whatever happens, you're just going to go with it, okay? And so that was their plan. That was, you know, the way that they were going to handle that. No matter how planned you try to be, the reality of not knowing what's going to happen tomorrow and, and, and not knowing, uh, you know, what, if it's going to be bad or something good's going to happen or whatever, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So you just give it to the Lord and say, Lord, whatever happens, I'll just take it. I'll be thankful for it. I'll trust you. You're going to give me strength. I'm going to get through it. Man, what a load off if you can just live that way. Okay, so no matter how planned you are, it's not going to be enough, you know. But Philippians 4, 11 through 13, you don't need to turn there, but that's where Paul says, you know, I have learned in, in every state to be content. Right? I know how to uh, abound, and I know how to, you know, do without, basically. And so he says uh, uh, not to worry about tomorrow. Okay, so let's talk about tomorrow. Number one, some things are going to work out fine. All the things that you're stressed about. In fact, most of the things in my life that I've stressed out about the most probably didn't even, nothing even happened. <laughs> you know I mean? It was not as bad as I thought it. It, it took care of itself. It worked out. It was okay. So all the things that you're stressing about about tomorrow, you know, you don't know. It's probably going to work out just fine. And here's the other side of the coin. Tomorrow, there are things that are going to happen that you had no idea was going to happen. Like, I didn't know today. I knew that my, my, cool, my radiator was leaking coolant somewhere. And today, I decided to go look at it. I didn't know. It was going to explode, and I wasn't going to have my part, and I was going to go searching for my part, and they weren't going to have it, and they were going to order it. You know, and I could have just got so frustrated about that and let it ruin my whole day. But I didn't. I just said, oh, things happen. <laughs> I try to make plans, and I need to try to figure this out, and just, you know, we'll get it tomorrow. No reason to overly stress about it. I didn't have that planned. I didn't have that written out tomorrow, uh, yesterday, like, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to plan for, for that, you know. And some things, some, some things we can't plan for. Now, I mean, I could have stressed out and got a new radiator as soon as, as, soon as it started uh, leaking a little bit and, and all those kinds of things. That would have been just fine. But you know what? Then something else would have happened. Every day, no matter how much you plan, something's going to happen that you weren't expecting. And so if you can live your life saying, you know what? Something's going to happen tomorrow that I wasn't expecting, and I'm just going to go with it. I'm going to give it to the Lord. I'm not going to get stressed out about it. You know, what a load off because that time is going to come, I'm telling you. And when it comes, you're going to be like, what do I do? What do I do? Well, here's what you do. You just breathe. And you say, you know what? I'm not going to worry about tomorrow when I've got enough to worry about today. <laughs> right? So I'm going to get through today, get the things done that I meant to get done if possible, uh, prepare for the things that I'm going to do tomorrow as much as possible, and then I'm just going to sleep like a baby, wake up tomorrow, and start another day. Okay? <clears throat> here's some things that Paul... the great example, Paul the Apostle, here's some things that he was ready for. He says, he's ready to preach. Okay? And he tells Timothy, be ready, uh, be instant, in season, out of season. You know, Re uh, Reprove, rebuke, exhort. And so he's telling him, hey, be ready to, to give the word. In season, meaning like whenever it's popular, and out of season, whenever it's not popular, I believe that's what he's saying there. Uh, be ready and just, and just do it. Just do it. Paul was ready to help, be a help to others at any cost. You know, Jesus said, you know, how about this, okay? You think that, you think if somebody is just walking and starting their day and they got all these things to do, and somebody came, came and said, hey, would you go with me a mile? Oh, man, I really don't have time for that. You know, my day is, is, is shot already. You know, I can't contribute to you. Or if someone said, you know what, there's a couple things I can move around, and I'm going to go ahead, in fact, I'm going to go with you two miles. Isn't that what Jesus said to do? You know, that's, you weren't expecting that. You didn't know somebody was going to ask you to go to a mile. You didn't know that you were going to volunteer to go two miles, but you went ahead and, and, and did it. And, 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 and uh, Paul was ready to be a help. How about that good Samaritan? You know, everybody else was like, oh, man, I can't stop and help this guy. Good Samaritan. I'm sure it was an inconvenience to him, too, wherever he was going. But he said, you know what? I can get you this far. I can give you this much money. I can take care of you this much. And then I'm going to go, and when I'm going to come back, I'm going to check on you again. But he stopped and he did what he could for that day. And he didn't, uh, he didn't worry about how it affected his plans and how he didn't get certain things done or whatever. 
Paul the Apostle even said he was ready to die. In 2 Timothy 4, 6, he says, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. He was ready. He was ready. So some things are going to work out just fine tomorrow. Don't worry about them. And then some things are going to happen tomorrow that you weren't prepared for. Don't worry about those right now either. You're living in today. Don't worry about tomorrow. This is why it would do you no good to worry about tomorrow because you don't know what's going to happen. You've, everyone here has heard of Murphy's Law. If anything can go wrong, it will go wrong. Now, I don't know how literal. I, like, I always took that to be sarcasm. Like a sarcastic, you know, if anything can go wrong, it will go wrong. But I, I, I think it, it's actually more scientific than that. It's like if there's a possibility that something can go wrong, rest assured, eventually that's going to go wrong. <laughs> I think it's actually a scientific uh, fact, not just a joke. But in our own life, sometimes don't you feel like, man, if anything can go wrong, it's going to go wrong. <laughs> like every day, something else is going to go wrong. But, yeah, that's the reality of it. Things are going to go wrong that you weren't planning on. Just take a breath. Get it done, live another day, and, and, and let tomorrow take care of itself, okay? <clears throat> and here's the thing. Tomorrow, if all goes well, you get to rejoice. Man, that worked out perfect. In fact, it worked out better than I could if I would have planned for it. God took care of that, you know? If tomorrow... Everything that you thought was going to happen, and it happens the opposite way, and other things happen that you didn't plan on, and everything went bad, guess what? You're going to give it to the Lord, and he's going to help you get through that tomorrow. And if we live a life thinking that, thinking in those terms, it's going to help us get a whole lot more done for the Lord, and it's going to help us be a lot more peaceful and, uh, and at rest. And the thing is, the most important thing that we need to worry about is being right with God, Right? Most of the things people are worrying about are things that have nothing. God doesn't care about those things. That's why he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. If we're right with God and we're living, doing what God wants us to do, isn't he going to provide for our needs? Isn't he going to take care of us? And that's what he's trying to say. On that note, <laughs> let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. And we give you thanks for all that's happened today, good or bad. Uh, and I pray that you would just help us to uh, be as prepared as we can be, but to know in our minds that anything can happen tomorrow. We give it to you. We put it in your hands. We don't worry about it today. And, Lord, I pray that you'll help us to, uh, uh, to have that same faith and confidence as we go throughout uh, our lives. Uh, most importantly, Lord, though, help us think about the kingdom. Help us think about serving you and serving others. And, uh, and being right with you and, and getting things, getting sin out of our life and, and, and doing more uh, for your kingdom, producing more fruit, Lord. And help us focus on those things. And then the more that we do that, the more we realize that you will take care of our needs. You will provide for us and you will help us get through another day, Lord. So I pray you help us do that. Help us apply that to our lives and that it will be a help, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.